Hello everybody and welcome back to the Darkest Dungeon. We are here once again within the Cursed Estate and we are ready to jump in to our first level 5 boss. And let me tell you, I am afraid, I'm worried. Not only are we going into a level 5 dungeon that is the Necromancer Lord, we also might get a thing from the stars. And then on top of that, we have the chance of running into some of the enemies from Heavy Monsters. Those of which we haven't seen on level 4 missions because they only spawn on level 1, 3, 5 and 6 missions. Which means, could run into some very scary stuff. But I put together what I at least hope will be a very good team. We have Felfa here running up the front mainly from uh, using Iron Swan. Going to be going with all our unholy damage and damage just for that insane damage buff. And um, then she's also got Demon Slayer for extra Eldritch and unholy damage which is just fantastic. Um, it's really going to help out that. Then we've got Clint here. He's going to be bringing the Focus Ring and Eagle Eyes Talisman for that massive accuracy, a bit of crit and that damage. Uh, and he again does have Armor Breaker, which is going to help out. Uh, and um, he does have the Witch here as well, which is also good. We then have Linus, who's going to be coming out with a Wounded Dolly and the Husband's Heart for that little bit of proc, because kind of low base HP. And the um, plus six crits received debuff. He's basically going to be out here just debuffing everything. Maybe may Mainly debuffing dodge and speed on the boss himself. Um, and then also we got Will June with the Silver Syringe and the Last Light. I'm a little bit scared of Will's complete lack of, um, of maximum HP. It's a bit scary, but I think we should be okay. We should be able to get through this not too bad at all. Um, and let's, let's try it out, shall we? Let's see how it goes. Um, yeah, let's jump on him. Uh, we do have some dire entries, but I'm going to go into those at the end of the episode. Let's jump on into this. Let's go. Provisions. Let's grab everything we can. This is going to be a tough mission. I'm a bit afraid. I'll even grab the Loudonim as well. Why the hell not? Oh, yeah, this is our first level 5 boss. So, unfortunately, scouting chance is diminished here because of distracted. Sadly, it is unfortunate, but I am willing to bring this team out nonetheless. I brought my colleagues back with... Much of their intellect intact. A remarkable triumph, or even the most experienced necromancer. Freed from the trappings of their humanity, they plied their terrible trade anew. The dead reviving the dead, on and on, down the years. Forever. Forever, my god. The chills. But yeah, this is going to be tough. And I, I'm really worried about some of these um, more difficult enemies from the uh, Heavy Monsters pack. They're kind of my biggest concern right now because we know a few of them can a be absolutely brutal. And we have a few new ones, but Only the mad or the we got to just go. go in search of him. Great dodge right off the bat. And also we got some stress relief there just in case for later too. Very nice to see. We should be good for damage here. This group is is very, especially Felfer in the front, should be able to just absolutely annihilate a lot of the enemies we come across. The the big, honestly, the biggest worry I have is Will and um, Linus's small health pool. Both of them are going to have a little bit of trouble if they get a big crit, um, and we're going to have to act very fast in healing them. So first of all, we've got one of the burn bearers. We want to be taking him out straight away. I'm one of these guys as well. All of these dudes could be problematic. We could get crit here quite easily as well. Of course, we're building up the prop with Will and the uh, the last light. That's a small problem because we can't use our um, thingy. Uh, let's do this, actually. Bring you forward. Um, marks you. And you've got prop, don't you? You do have a bit of prop. Let's get rid of that prop. Unfortunate Linus missed there. But we should be able to get good damage off on this guy. Um, and we are just going to heal the party for that prop. Huge heals, but mainly we're looking at that prop bonus. That's what we want to see. This guy, we want to take him down as fast as humanly possible. The spear thrusts, they're going to hurt. They're going to be some of the big crits that we'll be seeing. Um, unfortunately, 10% chance to target a random person with one of Clint's problems. And we saw it there play out. Okay, this guy's pretty much dead now. Felfer should be able to finish him off. Um, there's a bit of a heal though. Still, Felfer should have an okay time healing there. But yeah, we should see massive heals from Will. Absolutely massive heals. That prot is going to be very important for him. Uh, we're going to bring him forward again. Make sure this guy is absolutely gone first. Um, 
You do have prot as well. Let's reduce your prot now, because we're going to kill this guy with Felter in a single hit, most likely. Again, we're just going to spam this for the uh, the prot. 30 prot for everyone is great. If we can consistently keep that, that'd be amazing. Unfortunately, he's moved back once more. And there's, there's the hit on Will. Luckily, Will having good dodge there. We're going to have to just slice on you. Sadly, this guy's still alive. Judgment Day. That's a big hit. But luckily, that prot does negate some of that damage. Again, pulling you forward. Hoping we can get that last hit on you. Please don't do it again. He just keeps pushing himself. Okay, Wicked Surge isn't too bad. Everyone gets healed back up to full. Huge heals there. 13 for everyone. This time... Oh, Linus, please. I need you to be hitting. Oh, my God, guys. Maybe Linus should be removing this guy's dodge rather than prop. Maybe that'd make more sense. Okay, Felther being back here is definitely problematic. Defend the icon. Kind of hurts a bit. Uh, yeah, let's let's do that. Let's get rid of this guy's dodge and set up our repose for ourselves. Why not? A momentary abatement. I, I'm scared Felther's going to be completely out of position to do anything now. Uh, she kind of is. Let's just go for it. Yeah, I was going to say we just had to go for that. It, it's, it would probably be better to move her forward, but getting that guy out of the roster as early as possible is very important. 15 crits received. We definitely want to get rid of that. Um, especially this this um, spear thrust guy. He could be really problematic. He's got a lot of dodge as well, so let's remove that. There you go. And he gets his crits received on him. Okay, at least he's not targeting uh, Will in the back there. This hit pretty hard, even though the bleed's not going to hit. So I'm, I'm going to stick with that. Right, let's quickly just remove this, just in case. And go for another heal on everyone. That healing is absurd. <laughs> so much healing for the full team. These two are going to be feeding into each other. We should be okay, though. We're going to lower your prop, just because you're annoying. I don't. I think his resist is actually pretty high. Debuff resist, yeah, 80. It's not insane, but it's, it's relatively high. Um... Everyone's on 20 prot. I want to keep that 30 prot off, even if we don't need the healing. Um, there we go. That's fantastic. Well, that does heal up this guy and give him some prot as well. He's still got these debuffs. We should be okay. Let's move you forward one. It was annoying that we got Felfer out of position straight off the bat. It's not what we want. But at the same time, we got to expect it. And she is relatively robust in how she can move around. We don't require her to be in there. Uh, in that position. She can still hit from multiple positions here. We probably should have played that out of one more turn to get an extra heal. God. Uh, yeah, we probably, probably should have played that out to get an extra heal, but it's okay. Relatively small um, ruins here. We don't have to go through too many areas to get to our boss. Uh, we just got to make sure that we do camp before our boss, though. Another trap. We're getting unlucky with those. We will, uh, we will feed you up a little bit. Well, make sure you're not too... Too damaged because we don't want you to come into a fight and get insta critted. We did get some scouting here. That's rather nice. We're going to try and avoid combat whenever we can. Because you got to remember, Thing from the Stars Thing could show up. We really do not want Thing from the Stars to show up. Obviously, Trap Maker guaranteed Trap Disarms here, pretty much. I say guaranteed. It's, it's, it's nearly. He's very, very skilled at it. He knows exactly what he's doing, especially in the Ruins. I think in the Ruins, he's more so well-versed than anywhere else. So this will be our boss room here. We're really hoping we don't get thing from the stars, but we probably will. I'm, I'm, I'm essentially, I w when I built this team, I was taking that into account. And that's kind of the main reason we're bringing Linus here, because he has this ability to reduce prot. While the thing from the stars does have kind of high debuff resist, it's just worth it for the chance. Spirits are lifted. It's just worth it for the chance. Right. Another trap. Wow. This is, a, this is just very unlucky. And not the rule. Very unlucky. We're not too worried about getting money here. Okay, this is a kind of hard bit of combat. We should be okay, though. Tenting Gobbler. These guys are kind of high speed, so we'll probably end up taking a few hits before we get any goes. Oh, no. Okay. We'll take you out first. Nice one, Clint. Oh, we didn't We didn't mix these two up. That's okay. That's okay. It still works out for us. Um, You have high dodge. Let's get rid of that now. We don't want to take too much more stress here. And definitely get everyone healed back up. Great stuff. Should hopefully handle our stress decently as well. Quarrel here coming in. Nice dodge, Felfa. I was expecting Felfa's low dodge. I say low. It's lowered because of a trinket. It's not low itself. 
I was expecting that to be a problem, but luckily it wasn't. So this guy's actually going to get stronger with each passing turn. So we really want to take him out as quickly as possible, but he does have a repurst. So he is slightly problematic. Nice dodge there, Will. That's fantastic for us. This guy does have high prot. Let's try and get rid of some of that. Indeed, we did. That's very nice. And he's got crits received on him as well. Fantastic. 13 to 16 healing a turn. Boy, that's good. And 56. There you go. Crits received is such a good debuff. And it does lower the amount of healing Linus gets. But with Linus' smaller yeah, HP okay. pool, it's okay. And as you can see... This team is well versed for this area. So they are um they, they know what they're doing. Or is it merely a trick Let's jump in here, mind. see if we've got another battle. That we do, and we have the golem. Oh my goodness. This guy this guy could be real problematic. This guy is technically a mini boss, so really want to be careful around this dude. Really want to be careful. Uh, I don't know the best way to kill him. And I don't know if the Drifting Artificer is uh, someone we want to kill early or someone we want to leave. He does have 60% prot. Let's go for an attack on him first. We're going to try and just lower prot as much as possible here. Uh, there we go. That was great. And we're just going to try and go for pure damage because we are going to take a lot of damage from this guy. He does have some strong debuffs too, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly from what I'm reading. Okay, so this is what this guy's meant to do. Spear thrust coming out, that's going to hurt, but it does move us back into position, so that's good. Um, the promise of safety. Yeah, this is going to be a long fight. A long and treacherous fight. Unfortunate that we got this a step before the boss, but I kind of knew the risks going in here. This guy, we, we did a lot of damage there. Armor piercing and all, and there you go. Awesome stuff. This guy's no longer going to be guarded, I don't think. Yeah, that should fall off him. Cleave's going to hurt. Yep. Ooh, and that pushes us all the way back, too. This guy has double attacks. Didn't realize. Does have some issues with sound, I'm noticing. Um, But we should be okay. The biggest problem is this dude. Honestly, it, it doesn't seem like it would be. Our healing's on point here, so we should be fine for that. Felfa getting stunned there. Most problematic, but we are doing just insane damage to this guy now. With his minus 30 to prop, he's changing forms. We, we should be okay. This spear throws, please don't hit. Okay, he did hit, but not, not enough damage to be problematic. He gets a second one for some reason. I think he's giving his teammates extra actions, possibly, but he's dead now. Very difficult fight there, or potentially very difficult. We, we, we made it look like... We made it look very easy, honestly, but that is that is not always going to be the case. Nice crit on that guy. Obviously, no bleed, but hey her. Sadly, we did get our, our guys mixed up, so we're not going to be able to do too much here. But we can pull him, and yeah, I was hoping that happens. Yeah, that enemy, basically not not quite, but basically a mini boss. Uh, so we're going to camp here, um, and yeah, let's camp. Circle in the go with park. 10 food. The battle may yet be won. And let's check what we've got. So, 25%. That, that is very, very tempting. I don't think the dude has any movement skills, so he won't be able to pull us out of position one. So we should be good to take that. Um, it's probably what I will end up taking. Uh, that seems like the best idea. One second. Okay, let's let's just have a little look. See, so I think this is definitely best, even though it could lower our damage output. In fact, okay, <laughs> that's kind of dumb that you're allowed to do that. But <laughs> all right, um, yeah, let's do that. All all commands getting a little bit of stress is not very problematic. Um, there's not too much else here that we need to be honest. So. I think we just go with minus percent stress on everyone, I guess. Minus percent stress on you. Minus percent stress on you. And minus percent stress on you. Good, good. Okay. Good, 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 good. Right. Again, one second. Sorry about this. Okay, and now, because I left this here, we can actually use this to give ourselves a bonus in damage. So we should get even more damage. Oh no, is that prot? It's, it's prot and dodge. Still, that's very good. Uh, and this should be the boss here. Honestly, 
we are far more prepared than I was expecting going into this fight, and we didn't have as many hardships as I was as I was thinking we'd come across. I'm not going to lie. Um, this might end up being a shorter episode because I am planning on just leaving it as the boss as, it's, as, it, as it stands alone. But here we go. Let's try this out. Six feet under. I don't know how, the, how bad the boss himself will be. We'll find out. Uh, we're just looking to get out as much damage. 215 HP here. We're just looking to get out as much damage as we can. We're just going to continue with the heals to get that proc going. Make sure people aren't taking too much damage. And this should be a, a relatively good build. 48 crit already is fantastic. Starting out with that is insane. Uh, and this guy does have high dodge, so we just rip that dodge off of him. It also rips a lot of that speed off of him too, which again is fantastic. Fresh, flesh is willing. That does hurt us, but we heal that right back. God damn. Will June with the last light is insanely powerful, I've got, I've got to say. Um... Let's do this, just because that's going to give ourselves speed. And it's going to mark you for later. Uh, which does mean that we can do this, which doesn't actually matter. We we want to keep going with this because we want to get that debuff. While the debuff resist is high on this guy, we should be able to get it eventually. Damn, something I didn't notice. This guy does have low bleed resist though, so we can get him. He's not in third position yet, so we can't use swarm, unfortunately. That guy did get debuff. Minus 50 dodge. Yes, please. Yes, please, indeed. Try and stun him. Unfortunately, stun resist is very high. Six feet under once again. Did hit all of us this time. Now he's in last position. May look like a bad thing. Actually kind of a good thing. So now we can hit with Iron Swan. Iron Swan is a very high damage move. On a crit, we're going to be hitting for 60-something, maybe more. There's our first crit on us. And, of course, it had to be on Clint. Please get the debuff off. Come on. Yes, there you go. Exactly what we needed. Lowering that uh, lowering that speed and dodge at the same time. Very, very good. Um, I'm just going to stun on this guy for right now. This guy, um, Clint, is kind of here just to um, facilitate killing these burn boys as they get summoned. But they're summoning with stealth, which I didn't actually expect. So not as effective. We keep stacking that minus dodge, minus speed. Wow, there's another crit coming in. Crits don't matter too much as long as they don't stack on top of each other. And they didn't, thank God. A stack some more bleed and there's a crit. We, we have annihilated this man. I did not expect this to go as well as it has. It could still go wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying it's said and done already. But we are in a very good position right now. That's exactly what Clint's here for. Doing that right there. And stacking that bleed, another huge crit. Because he's plus 12 crits received, it's insane. The crits received buff, when it stacks, is very, very potent. And there you go, everyone's up to full health. You're dying in one bleed tick. And there you go, Linus for the finish. Unexpected. Unexpected, but obscene on how powerful it was. My god, it was so powerful. Beautiful stuff. Right, we'll take that. We'll return to the Hamlet. And this is 18 minutes. That was that was much quicker than I was expecting. But there you go. We picked up ourselves quite a few different things here. A few good trinkets. And we get everyone to level 6 as well. Great to see. Glad everyone's up there. Uh, let's take a look what we've got in the Hamlet now. Wilbur, I really wish it wouldn't bring them in at level 0, because I would love to bring on Wilbur. He's a very strange little hero, but he can work quite well in certain team comps. Uh, right, so let's take a little look at what we've got going on with trinkets. Um, bypass stealth as a trinket is pretty good, pretty good. Uh, let's check out here... Nothing off the bat that I can see that I really want there. Um, and let's quickly check on our stagecoach here. See who else we've got. And at the minute, unfortunately, no one. We do have a thorn, but level two, I'm not willing to take a level two. Some good stuff here, nonetheless. Um, sadly, nothing we actually need right now, though. Uh, but yeah, let's let's do a bit of a deeper dive into some of our heroes and make sure everyone's looking the best they can. Uh, we do have our first new hero in, in a little bit here. Uh, and this is an interesting one. Uh, let me just get the backstory ready here because there is some good stuff. Um, let's have a little look-see. This is, this is a really interesting one. It's a bit of a different backstory to what we'd normally see. 
Uh, but this here, wherever he is, he's somewhere around. This here is the Golem, simply known as the Golem. And you may notice, we just fought him. Indeed. Uh, a few of the people in the hamlet had found one of these um, one of these towering masses and decided to do some experiments of their very own. This is by Blank Gaming, and this is a diary entry between Artemis and the backstory for the Golem. We're gonna we're gonna actually give her the name as as said here. Um, I was gonna just put the Golem, but I'm now noticing there's a name here: Vola, uh, Vi Viola, Viola, the Golem, uh, and she says. Finally, all that effort, all those failed attempts and all those sleepless nights, and I finally succeeded. After some of those self-proclaimed heroes saw my past veil, saw, saw past my veil, I've been living in the shadows, making sure no one will see me. Until people think Artemis is gone, I'll hide away. But that's beside the point right now. I finally created life, a golem. She's yet to wake up, but when she does, she should be mostly under my command. If anyone is planning to hunt me down because they see me as a monster, they'll have quite a fun surprise waiting for them. My only hope now is that none of those bookworms notice the books um, about creating life going missing and being rearranged. That could cause me a few issues. Indeed it could, but here is Viola, our new golem, taken from deep within the ruins and reanimated. Of course, seems like some of those failed experiments all those failures have made their way back into the ruins and animated in not quite the most commanding way so artemis may have brought in a new age into the ruins and caused some significant problems for everyone in the hamlet but there is there is always risk when it comes to science someone that you'd unlike think unlikely to uh to be out reanimating corpses, turning stone into matter. But it's the people you least expect, the people that are outcast. Artemis here. She comes from a wealthy background. She is highly educated. You may not expect it from someone that just thinks so, so highly, but behind the shadows, she's truly, truly shown what she can do. She's not been out in a very, very long time. So she's been tinkering away and these countless experiments, some resulting in failure, some resulting in success, and finally, this one, Viola, under her command. And then lastly, we have a diary entry for Allure, our Blackguard, again by Blank Gaming. There's something, this isn't right, there's something that isn't right here. Besides the seas of monsters and such and the terrifying creatures, something new. Recently, I met the Vestal uh, named Sophia. The moment I heard her name, I also heard something in the back of my head. I couldn't make out what the noise was, but after I heard it, I couldn't stop thinking about the name Sophia. It's like it was something I shouldn't know. Later when night struck, I kept on thinking about her, and I felt a connection with her. Like we are somehow related. And for some odd reason, even though she always had her face covered, I can just see her face when thinking about her. I'm not saying there's more to meet, more to where than meets the eye, but something here is going on. It seems that uh, Sophia also has some twisting paths and maybe some, uh, maybe some some grim past with Allure the Blackguard and maybe even the Veiled himself. The Veiled himself, he uh, he is of course the king that rose Harathan from the grave, um, and the Voidwalker is his name. And he could definitely, I can definitely see that Sophia may have some, may have some, some truths that she wants to hide from the rest of the town coming into play here. And maybe some of these, some of these people that once thought their undead nature was from the corrupt eldritch magic of the, um, of the ancestor. Maybe, maybe it's not quite so plain cut. Maybe there's some other dark arts at play here. I'm sure there'll be more investigating into that story as we progress. Either way, we are going to leave the episode here. I know it's a short one, uh, but we'll be getting back into more episodes as we carry on. And yeah, we, we managed to absolutely slap the boss. I'm, I'm glad it went so well. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one.